Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Mount Bright's uh, worship today. We are glad you are here. We're going to begin our worship with the piano prelude. Lynn will lead us at this time. Let us hear this call to worship. We enter into worship today with hope in our heart. For something happens here that reminds us that we can live as God desires. God has made a promise of faithfulness to us, and we can trust God's promises. I'm going to share an invocation, and following that, we will have our altar prayer. If you have desire for uh, consideration in altar prayer, put it in chat, and we will bring it forth in the altar prayer uh, time. Hear this, this invocation. Amazing God of mercy and love, thank you for calling to us this day. We praise you because you challenge us to show our faith in ministries of peace and justice, offering compassion to all people in need. Lord, open our hearts and minds today to hear your words of encouragement and challenge. We offer this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. I do see the Richard O. Simpson family uh, requesting prayer. Sandra Winstead and the Keith family. God is able. God is able in all of our circumstances and everything that we are concerned with. Eddie White is mentioned. Let us pray. God of grace, we bow before you today. We give praise to your name. We're so grateful because you have been good. This is a time when we come with our petitions and our requests, but we cannot even get to that point without saying thank you. Regardless of our needs, regardless of our struggles, you have blessed us and kept us, and we say thank you. Now, Lord, we do bring these petitions to you. You know us and you know of each and every circumstance and situation. We ask, Lord, that you will be with us in all of our struggles. You know us, Lord, and you know what we have need of. We lift up Richard Simpson, Lord, and his family as Richard is uh, continuing to recover from his surgery, from the break in his hip. We pray, Lord, that you'll give strength and power for healing, but also provision for the family as they have need. Take care of each of them. We lift up Sandra Winstead and the Keith family. We lift up Eddie White. Uh, we lift up all the COVID patients, uh, close friends with uh, COVID-19. We lift up uh, Vermal Hayes, 
uh, Sean Lipscomb's grandmother, and we lift up Earl McLaughlin and Elbert Riley. Lord, we lift up Regina Lipscomb, uh, Sean's mother. Lord, hear our prayer. Meet us where our needs are. Provide for everything that we need. We trust you because we have seen you work in our lives in days gone by. We have seen your hand at work and we've seen you move in all of our, tro our troubles and struggles. We ask, Lord, that you will be with us now. Give us faith and then, Lord, give us victory. We trust you and we claim that victory. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let me say welcome to everyone to our worship. If this is your first time being with us, we're glad that you're here, uh, that you made this decision to come and join us. We're excited and glad about that. And we uh, hope and pray that something is said or is done that is a blessing to you and to your life, to your family, to all that you are engaged in. We hope that you will be blessed and decide you want to come back and join with us again at some other time on another uh, Bible study, another worship time. You're always welcome to come and be with us at Mount Bright. If you're a member or you're continuing to come and be with us, we're glad you're here. We're glad you're back. And we hope that your life is blessed because of today's worship. Welcome, welcome, welcome. At this time, we're going to have our morning hymn. And Lynn is going to lead us in our hymn. Good morning, everyone. This is a beautiful morning. Some of us might have felt a little shaking this morning, um, had a slight earthquake, but God is still good. We're still here. And we're grateful for that. So in everything, everything, may Jesus Christ be praised. This is the last Sunday for our student interns. He's going to do the prayer. Later on, Sean will lead us in a selection, but we're glad that they've been with us for 10 weeks, but he will lead us in the prayer at this time. Dear God, the one that we love so dearly, the one who 
walks with us on a daily basis. The one who cares for us so much that he gave his only begotten son. We honor you. We worship you. We thank you. There aren't enough words in our minds that could illustrate how much we care for you. And there aren't enough words in this world to even begin to fathom how much you care for us. For that reason and many more, we have pledged our lives to yours. We have yoked our lives to you. We thank you for you making your yoke so easy. We ask that you be present with us in our worship this evening, this, today, that you be with the minds of your people, that you ingrain yourselves in our hearts, that if we have any characteristics or any attributes that do not resemble your goodness and your grace, that you remove them from us. Thank you for the Mount Bright community and thank you for this ministry. Thank you for those who have come before us and bless you for those who will come after us. Continue to walk with us and progress us and push us and commune with us all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This time we're going to have a selection by Ivy Graves. I believe this is a viola. She will be playing the viola in this selection. This is our granddaughter, our middle granddaughter. And she, she's actually named after me, Ivy Lynn Graves. In about nine days, she'll be 11 years old. And we couldn't be more proud of this grandchild.
know, we're just bursting it uh, with uh, with pride at, at uh, our our granddaughter and sharing when I survey the wondrous cross. Let me make just a, a couple of observations. I had already stated that uh, this is the last formal Sunday for our student interns, Gilbert Barney and Sean Lipscomb. They've been with us for 10 weeks this summer term as uh, students at Duke University Divinity School. We're so proud of them. We're so excited that they've been with us. And uh, we want them to know this does not have to be your last time joining us. You're welcome to be with us and to share with us. At any time you want to come by and join in, you are welcome. And uh, Sean's gonna do a song uh, a little later on before the sermon, but we're just excited that they are here with us and they've been with us and hopefully they will return at some time in days to come. Uh, I did want to also say there was an announcement that we are, uh, there's been a request that we have some yarn and jigsaw puzzles, 1,000 piece jigsaw puzzles to go to the youth detention center for girls in Siler City. Uh, if you could bring those to the church on, on Thursday between 10 and 2, I'll be there to receive them in the upstairs fellowship hall. Uh, you will need to wear a mask if you're going to come in to bring them and drop them off. We ask that you come, and this is not a time really for a lot of socializing, but we'll be there for you to drop them off, but wear a mask when you come into the church so that we can get these things to, um, to the, the youth detention center in Siler City uh, later in the week. God bless you and be uh, dutiful in all the opportunities you have to share and serve in the life of the church. At this time, we're going to have our scripture reading, Elaine. Bellamy is going to lead us in our scripture at this time. Following that, Sean will do the Sean will do his selection, and then we will have the morning message. Good morning. Good morning. I will be reading First Corinthians, first chapter, verses one through nine. Salutation. Paul called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother Sosides to the church of God that is in Corinth to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus called to be saints together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ both their Lord and ours grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given to you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will always strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. God's word is always a blessing. Amen. Yeah, this one's for you, Jim. I'm so glad that you saved me and you came into my life. So I'm gonna let the world know today how real you are today. I love you.
pray. God bless you. Jesus is real because he's real to me. Amen. Let us say amen. Thank you, Sean. He's real. Thank you for sharing your gifts and talents with us. Uh, we should have had should have had you on earlier and weeks ahead of, before this, Sharon, but we're glad we got you in as a part of our uh, musical uh, work today. Today I'm going to talk about when I am called and when you are called. When I am called and when you are called. I'm just going to read a few verses that were read earlier from 1 Corinthians uh, 1, verses 1 through 3. Paul called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and your brother Sosthenes to the church of God in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be his holy people, together with all those everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Our text today is found in what we call Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth. It is probably not his first letter to them because in chapter five of this letter, Paul refers to another letter he had written them before this one. That prior letter was not kept. So this letter is called First Corinthians. The letter that we have from Paul to the church at Corinth are our vivid portrayals of actual life and challenges that the early Christian church encountered. Corinth, like most cities, had a reputation. Corinth had a reputation of being a city where whatever you did was acceptable because the city embraced many different nationalities many different ethnicities, and many different religions. Corinth's history helped, uh, history helped to form its reputation. Approximately 150 years before Christ, Corinth was destroyed and laid in ruins for nearly 100 years. Then about 50 years before Christ, the emperor Julius Caesar resettled the city because it was in a location that could connect two bodies of water with a seaport, one on the east side of town and another on the west side of town. The, the re-emergence of the city made it a magnet for commerce and transportation, for sailors brought shipments of goods into and through the city. The traffic meant diverse people from across the known land would find themselves in Corinth. Multiple nationalities, ethnicities, languages, and customs were found in Corinth. This settlement of diverse people meant there was no prominent religious or moral perspective persuading, mandating uh, the dominance of the people into what was ethical, what was an ethical pathway. The overarching principle of the Corinthian culture was to make money and to have a good time. Make money and have a good time. Make more money and have a good time. And then make some more money and have a good time a form of hedonism surrounding uh, wealth and pleasure ruled the culture of this city where Paul had planted a church. Ethics about right and wrong based on human respect, 
human dignity and even human life were put on the back burner as financial gains and pleasure became the ethics that ruled the day. Now, in Corinth, people counted their money and then they counted how much fun their money could buy them. It's no wonder that the exchange of sex for money was common in Corinth. When it is used to barter between individuals or to control individuals. In the Corinthian culture, sex was a currency that meant gender roles had to be specifically controlled if their system was uh, to, to work the way they wanted it to work. Their gender roles were about controlling behavior so that everyone knew their place in a sex for pleasure economy. I must say that is what gender roles, and I would say most roles we assign people, are about even today. They are about making sure that people don't go outside of their defined spaces and places. So it is in this wild and diverse place that Paul had planted a church. He probably Church, and then he moved on and he planted churches in other locations. But because the situation was so volatile and so unruly, it's no wonder that during Paul's travels, the church in Corinth had some struggles and some hard questions that needed to be addressed. Now, in this message, I contend that Paul sees the power of his responses to the dilemmas of the Corinthian church are in their calling uh, to the disciples, in the callings that they all have as disciples of Jesus Christ in that era. It was the call placed on their lives that was going to address the challenges of what diverse an often wicked city that wicked city had. In verse one, Paul tells them that he is called and tells them that they are called. Walk with me around the text as we examine what Paul says about these callings. He says, I am called to be an apostle. First, Paul declares that he is called to be this apostle. This declaration is to inform the reader of two important truths, that his title gives him authority to lead and teach them in spiritual matters. The other truth is this declaration is that Jesus called him and this uh, into this position. Paul knew who placed him in his station and who truly gives him his authority. One of the key elements, the apostle had to have had a direct link to Jesus Christ. The other apostles were disciples of Jesus and walked with Jesus during Jesus' earthly ministry. Paul, a latecomer uh, to the Christian faith, did not have that opportunity to be with Jesus before he was crucified and resurrected. So Paul relies on his Damascus Road conversion as his time of meeting the Savior. Paul heard the voice of Jesus calling him, asking him, why do you persecute me? He heard the voice of Jesus calling him to get up and go into the city to be instructed. Because of the Damascus Road experience, Paul knew that he was called by God for the work that God had for him to do. on his life to deal with the circumstances that he would face. 
Paul knew that God was in the middle of all the challenges that he would be facing. And because God being there, and because of God being there, he would be able to see his way through whatever he had to deal with. Oh, my sisters and my brothers, you need to know, you need to move in your life the way that Paul moved in his life. You see, God has called you to be a servant. God has called your name to be an instrument of righteousness. God has called your number uh, to be the one who will step forward and stand up in the gap when someone is uh, needing help. God has called you to be the voice of freedom to those who are oppressed. Somebody hearing me today needs to know that God has placed you in the situation you are in because God wants you to be a champion for what is right. Oh, I'm talking to somebody. Somebody right now, hear this. God wants you to be a trumpet in the world that seems to set uh, uh, this world on fire. God wants you to have a voice that speaks to the wealth and pleasure that is raised as the means of success in this world. God wants you for this time. Our world today needs you to be the one that speaks truth to power. Often this world is set on going astray. It is bent on chaos. It is tempted toward destruction. It is callous toward fairness. It is prone to evil. It is subject to false leadership. It is indifferent to human life. It will be summarized in a statement. If you summarize this world, it would, be, it would say, it is what it is. Well, today, you are needed to say, I have been called by Jesus for this, for this specific time. The question is, will you hear the call and respond with a declaration of obedience to that call that comes from God. You see, when Paul was called by God on the Damascus Road, his response to the call was to get up and do what the Lord had told him to do. In like manner, your call will involve you getting up and doing what Christ instructs you to do. When you do that, you will be empowered to stand with boldness. Us all down into selfish pursuits. All I've been trying to say is that God has called you in the same way that God called Paul. So he, he says that this first point is that God had called him. He was called to be an apostle. And then he also indicates everyone is called to be holy. Paul writes back in Corinthians and, and share, writes back to Corinthians on his journey and shares his wealth of spiritual knowledge given to him by the Lord and by the Holy Spirit. Paul begins telling them that they are sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be holy along with all the other believers everywhere. Paul let them know that all the explosive work that is done in the church included them. Yes, great work is being done in Rome, in Ephesus, in Galatia, in Jerusalem, but Corinth also is a part of this dynamic movement of the church. Paul lets the church of Corinth know that they are online with the energetic new movement that is taking place in the lives of men and women as their lives are being turned upside down. Today, we need to know that we are a part of this dynamic church of Jesus Christ. Right here at Mount Bright, we share in the great incendiary work of God's people around the world. We are God's local flame of fire that burns and ignites other souls to know and to do God's will. We are on fire 
with the love of Jesus Christ. We are on fire with the word of God. We are on fire because we are praying. We are on fire because we share and care for others. We are on fire because we know what God has done for us. Oh, I just wonder, is there anybody here that knows what God has done for you, what God has provided for you, how God has blessed you, how God has taken care of you? Is there anybody here that knows that God is able? And if you do know, all oh, the fire ought to be burning deep within you. Hallelujah for a fire that burns. A lot of people misunderstand sanctification. It just, he, he says you're, they're sanctified, but a lot of people misunderstand sanctification. Sanctification is not, it has nothing to do with how loud your amen is. High you jump when you praise. It has nothing to do with how choreographed your praise dance is. Sanctification is about being set apart to do part for God's purposes, set apart, oh, to hold up the bloodstained banner. You're set apart to tell the truth. You're set apart to stand on the principles of God. Oh, set apart. Let me see if I can use an illustration so we can kind of understand what, what, what I mean by set apart. Here at our home, we eat every day, and you can tell that I eat every day. But at, at our house, we have dishes, and we have, we have really three sets of dishes. We got dishes we use when the grandbabies are over because we won't, we don't, you know, they're plastic, and we don't want them to break. And then we got some other dishes that are, you know, they're, 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 they're nice dishes. But then we have some dishes that are set up on the top shelf. These are our nice dishes, our nice plates, our, our nice stuff. When we're having a special day, a special occasion, these dishes are set aside for those dishes. Oh, we don't play around with those dishes. Those dishes are set aside for a special occasion. Oh, I'm here today to tell you, you are set aside for this time right now. You are set aside, oh, to be a voice in this land right now. God has sanctified us for this season of pandemic to tell the world that God is more than our buildings, more than our ministries, more than our traditions, more than our history. God has placed us here to proclaim that life is valuable and should not be taken for granted. I just said a couple of things. Paul said that he was called and then he told them that they were called. Paul concludes this brief exchange about his being called and about their being called with a statement that we will be counted with all the saints who are calling on the name of Jesus. Hallelujah for that. That we're in this larger number. Oh, we're in this grand scheme that God has going on. Paul says, I am called, and you are called, but what unifies us is that we together call on the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You see, we have learned that our individual tunes, uh, that we have individual tunes that are brought together in a unifying chorus of singing about our Savior. Understand, I have a call, and you have a call. I have a story, and you have a story. I have a song, and you have a song. But what may learn to call on the name of Jesus together? Oh, when I say Jesus and you say Jesus and we say Jesus together, a special power is ignited within us because we call on the name of the Lord together. What we have learned is that when we call on Jesus, we are calling on supernatural power. We are calling on the one who turned water into wine, we are calling on the one who healed the sick 
and raise the dead. We are calling on the one who fed thousands with two fish and five loaves of bread. We are calling on the one who walked on the water. We are calling on the one who was crucified, buried, and was resurrected on that next Sunday. We have learned that God is nearby. That's why we call to us. Uh, God is nearby, and all we have to do is call on the name of Jesus for holy power to flow into our lives. All it takes is one call, and the Lord is available to you. The old song says, I thank the Lord for everything, and I count my blessings each day. God came to me when I needed God. I only had to pray, and God will come to you if you ask God to. God's only a prayer away. I hope you know that God is only one prayer away. All you have to do is call on the Lord, and the Lord will be there to aid you and to sustain you. The Lord, uh, the song I learned as a child really speaks to this. It's fitting because it informed me uh, about the need to call on Jesus and also inform me that when I do call on Jesus, I don't have to be afraid to ask the Lord what's in my heart and what's on my mind. I can ask the Lord for what I want. Oh, I, I'm going to ask the Lord for what I need. But the song let me know I can ask the Lord for the longings of my heart. I can ask the Lord for what I want. The old song says, Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Call him up and tell him what you want. Call him up. Call him up. Call him up and tell him what you want. Praise God. I've been called. You've been called. We have on the name of the Lord. Praise God for the message today. At this time, the doors of the church are open. If you are here and you've heard this message, you can receive Jesus Christ into your life. All it takes is a simple call, and you can receive the Lord into your life. If you have never done that, you can do that here with us. Put it in chat that you want to have a relationship with Jesus, and we can walk you through what's needed to have this time of being with the Lord. If you don't have a church home, you've done that in the past, but you don't have a church home, you can let us know in chat also. We will join with you and help to bring you into the fellowship where we all together will call on the name of the Lord. Jesus is on the main line. Sing it with me. Tell him what you want.
I do ask that you would put the number that are attending from your home in the chat, put that number there so we could have a better indication of attendance. Tell the world about Jesus. with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and forever let us all say Amen God bless you